Hi everyone, I'm John Fenzel here at Arlington National Cemetery. You know, probably everybody has heard of uh, at least John Jay Blackjack Pershing, but for those of you who haven't, I thought we'd uh, we'd come over here and and visit his grave. So we're right here in uh, in Arlington's uh, Section 34, where he's buried. He uh, Pershing came from very modest origins. He was born in Missouri. He was the son of a railroad switchman. When he was 17, he was teaching in a rural school for African American kids, just so that he could earn enough money for his college tuition. But then he saw an ad for uh, to, to attend West Point, and uh, so he applied. He took the test, and to a surprise, he he was accepted. And uh, he graduated four years later. Um, he uh, he did very very well at West Point. He was president of his class, captain of cadets and uh, also he was commissioned uh, into the into the into the cavalry in 1898 he led the 10th cavalry troops up San Juan Hill during the Spanish American War, and uh, his his performance there was noticed by somebody else who we know very well, and of course that was Teddy Roosevelt, who fought his way up San Juan Hill with his Rough Riders. So, um, you know, and, and based on that, uh, he uh, he then. Uh, married uh, the, the daughter of a senator. Her, his name was um, Francis Warren of Wyoming, and her name was uh, Helen Francis Warren. Um, but uh, Roosevelt, uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, thought so much of Pershing and, and admired the way that he fought that he was actually promoted uh, over about 862 other more senior officers. He was actually, he went from captain to brigadier general. And then in, in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson gave him the task of pursuing Pancho Villa and his band of Mexican guerrillas who were uh, terrorizing the southwestern uh, United States. So he left his family in San Francisco. And uh, right when he was about ready to go into uh, to Mexico, he received the tragic news that his wife and his three daughters had been killed in a fire at their quarters at the Presidio. Um, and the only surviving member of his family was his six-year-old son. And so despite the, 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 the terrible tragedy, per Pershing then went into um, and continued with his mission and he successfully stopped Pancho Villa and then he was promoted to Major General. He commanded the, the famed Buffalo soldiers. It was that storied regiment, of course, of, um, of African-American soldiers, but his advocacy for them earned him the name Blackjack. Uh, and then it came to symbolize also his sternness, but that's how he originally got got the name. And when he returned uh, to Washington in 1917, Wilson named him to uh, head up the Allied Expeditionary Force, who was actually his second pick. And, um, and you know, there was just one problem with that, you know, before, you know, right after the declaration of war against Germany, we didn't really have an army. And so uh, Pershing's job then became to, uh, to to create one. And he was very ambitious. Nobody knew better what was ahead of them than, than Pershing. And so he uh, he said, I'm going to create a, a million man army by uh, 1918. And a year later, in 1919, it's going to be three million men. So his first act upon arriving into France was to lay a wreath at the uh, at the grave of Lafayette. Uh, it was that French general, of course, who, um, who had provided all of that invaluable assistance assistance to General uh, George Washington during during the Revolutionary War. As he laid the wreath, uh, he had his aide um, announce, Lafayette, we are here. And so that signified to the French that we were returning the gesture, gesture and, um, and we were assisting them just as uh, Lafayette had assisted us at our moment of need um, in 1776. So, you know, there's, there's lots of great quotes um, from, from Pershing. He, was, he once famously said, you know, I'm going to jump right down the throat of the next man who asked me if I think Americans will, will really fight. Fight? Americans? Of course we'll fight. Pershing uh, fully committed uh, all of the... the um, the American forces in Europe, and uh, he wouldn't agree to use the American forces only as replacements for all the depleted British and, and French units. And so he he deployed them right into the salient, to the to the Hindenburg line, and uh, all during the Moose Argonne offensive until the the Germans collapsed. And and uh, and he he did so well that. Um, uh, you know, he was also a huge advocate too for the for the Marine Corps too. He said, you know, the deadliest weapon in the world is a is a Marine with a rifle. Um, and you know, and of course, uh, uh, next month, uh, you know, a hundred years ago, the armistice was was signed, and and that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to to, to come up here. Um, 
and I'm going to show you something else uh, as well. But you know, Pershing returned uh, to the United States to a to a hero's welcome. He was promoted to the rank of General of the Armies, and that you know that rank was actually created in 1799 for George Washington. But it, you know, it was interesting. They found out actually that the Washington hadn't ever accepted that rank. So so Congress uh, posthumously conferred it upon him uh, in 1776. Actually, it was July 4th, 1776, on our bicentennial. And uh, that maintained uh, uh, General George Washington as the senior most ranking officer um, on the, the nation's uh, roster. So, you know, just very, very interesting. And then um, when he died in, in, in 1948, and I'm going to go up here so that you can see his, his, his grave, um, it was actually President uh, Harry Truman who led the funeral procession. And, um, and Truman was a doughboy. He was a captain during World War I as well, received a battlefield commission, as I recall. Um, his funeral service was, was right here at Arlington. And then you can see behind me the route. That they, that they took to, to get here, and he was uh, and he was buried right here um, on this this knoll, and uh, he had asked only that uh, that a simple white marker mark his his grave, and I'm going to show you his grave here. I'm gonna actually going to have to turn the cal the uh, the camera so that you can see it. There he is, John J. Pershing, from Missouri, General of the Armies of the United States, September 13th, 1860 to July 15th. 1948 and then his grandsons are also buried beside him here's his grandson Richard W Pershing second lieutenant who was killed in Vietnam on February 17th 1968 and then there's this beautiful blue spruce that's here that uh, no greater love had, uh, had dedicated to him in 1989 you are remembered 116,516 brave Americans who died in World War One and uh, and then you know back in uh, 2011 um, I attended the uh, the funeral and uh, burial for Frank Buckles who was the last um, of the World War One veterans and he is buried right here if I can find him here we go see uh, Togo West former Secretary of the Army is buried here as well. Let's see, where is he? Somewhere. Oh, here he is over here, I think. There he is, Frank Buckles. I knew he was around here somewhere. February 27th, 2011, born in 1901. That is the last of our World War I veterans. So, well, there you have it uh, here at the hallowed ground of Arlington National Cemetery and the Company of Heroes. I thought you'd like to know.